loyal subscribers. It is good to see you. Welcome back. How are you? How are you doing? What's going on? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm always interested in finding out how you've been since we last talked. You know, what's going on with you? It's interesting. People live very interesting lives and mine is so boring by comparison. So stories, you know, stories. And if this is the first time that you're watching any videos on my channel, my name is Wandunji, and I am so glad that you're here. Welcome! Welcome to Butterflies from Bees, where we talk about writing, we talk about books, we talk about stories, we talk about how it is that we can become better writers. I tell you things I've learned. And today, 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 day, 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 today, we are going to continue our conversation about the Kane Prize. Let's talk about these stories. Did you read these stories? And if you read them, what did you think about them? I'm curious. It's going to be important for me to finish all the reviews for these stories, because guess what? Guess who didn't find out when the Kane Prize was going to be announced? Me, and now I have to do this quickly because on the 8th of July, we will find out who takes the 10,000 pound prize home. Now I read these stories in order, in the order in which I downloaded them <laughs> from the site because they're free for us to download as PDFs and then you can read them at your leisure. Number one, I'm going to tell you how these stories made me feel. I'm going to try and talk about the things that it made me want to talk about with other people. And finally, what I learned about writing from these stories, because it's important. They've been shortlisted for a prize, nominated by the people who published their stories and shortlisted. So they're obviously doing something interesting or important or they have a skill that I can learn from. The first story, Skinned by Leslie Neka Arima, was a fascinating story. Happens in an African city that you could imagine is in a different universe, like an alternate universe where things are wackadoodle. Just like the Ferengi of Star Trek, if you have watched Deep Space Nine, the women in this particular culture are not allowed to wear clothes unless one, they are married, or two, they are too young to be married. But all the ages and people in between, women are not allowed to wear clothes. Now, you can clothe your daughters if you so choose, but there is a tax that you have to pay that doubles every year. So unless you are a very rich man who can afford to pay that tax for each daughter that you choose to clothe, your daughters have to go naked. The story follows a woman called Edem. She is unmarried and of advanced age for that particular region. We do not know what her exact age is, but she is unmarried and therefore unclothed. And we see her struggle to make a living for herself because of her state of nakedness. She also finds it difficult to maintain her friendships with women who are clothed because, you know, they have husbands and you don't want your naked friend around. And in the story, she meets a woman who changes her life, who changes her perspective. This woman is rich and she clothes herself. She's unmarried and she clothes herself, but she has enough money, which translates to power, and therefore doesn't get harassed by people to make sure that she is clothing herself. So presented with the choice of clothing herself, the main character finds difficulty in that. Putting on the clothes feels like an illicit act. And when she is confronted by a friend, there was a phrase that the friend said that was just so poignant to me. When she finds out that her friend has self-clothed. This is what she says to her. You think you're covered, but you're still naked. You don't get to be covered without giving something up. You don't get to do that. It is not fair. After everything I did for you, it is not fair. She runs back home and she suddenly recognizes the plight of a woman who is serving her, who is naked because she's of a lower caste, then demands that she be let into that world where her nakedness no longer has these weights put upon it, but that she can be of a lower class where even nobody recognizes your nakedness because you're of that lower class. So some of the things that it brought to light, some of the conversations that I wanted to have with people after I read this story, which was well-written, it was a well-written story. It gave a great introduction into this world. I wish that it would have been a novel length 
book because there was so much about this society that I wanted to dive into. I wanted to understand more about Adam's best friend who made that statement. It is not fair. What was she talking about? Was she talking about the fact that when you get married, you lose a bit of yourself? Is the clothing, putting on the clothes, the weight that she's talking about? Like I wanted to know more about this story. I felt that a short story format was too small for me to be able to explore the world. I found it strange that there was this mix of conservatism and this liberal advancement of women because the character, Adam, had been working in an architectural firm and she had worked well enough that she was higher up in the ranks. She couldn't, of course, continue her job because she was naked, but she'd gotten the education, she'd gotten the job and had risen in the ranks. And yet she's expected to be naked because that's the culture. So that was strange. I also found it strange how the nakedness in this story was demanded. It was illegal for a woman to put on clothes. And yet, in spite of the fact that there are these hordes of women, young and older, who are naked and the lower caste that nobody's looking at, that it was still lewd, that they still attracted lewd comments. Of course, it is impossible to talk about this story without sort of realizing that our culture is this way. That when you walk down the street, when you walk down the streets, <laughs> when you walk down the street, your body is still subject to people's eyes, to people's comments, and that those comments then attach a certain value to you as a human being. This is not to say that it doesn't happen to men, but it overwhelmingly happens to women. There's not a single woman I know who has not gotten a cat call or been grabbed at. Our society is not very different from this one. We're clothed, but we're still subjects of our bodies and what people think of them and what value they hold, especially if there, no marriage has happened. Another thing that it made me want to talk about was this idea of wealth and how a wealthy person can get away with anything. We know this to be true. The character in the story, who is self-clothed because she's wealthy, runs cloth factories, you know, that people use to clothe themselves, and she, the factory runs on the lower caste people, and they are run like every bad story that you've heard of about Chinese factories. That is how she runs her factories. So she is self-clothed. In one way, she is aware of what is happening. And in another way, she is maintaining tradition in the oppression of the lower caste. I was curious. The other thing that happened at the end of the story, after Adam had met her best friend and been chased home with words, she enters her room and finds an Osu woman cleaning. The Osu is the lower caste. The Osu woman is naked and afraid of her. And she bows quickly and vacates the room through a side panel where servants are supposed to come and go through unnoticed. Because she is feeling oppressed and, and confused and the weight of the cloth that she's put on and she just wants to get to a simpler place, she has gone to the oppressed person to demand that she be let into their world. That whatever it is that they have faced, whatever struggles it is they have come up as Osu people, that because she is feeling in this moment as oppressed as she imagines they feel, that they must let her into their world so that she could feel peace. And finally, this one was brought up by Baden. What did they do during their period? because you can't go naked and bleeding. It wasn't mentioned in the story, which is why I'm saying this short story format, while it worked to sort of capture the distress of this one character who's going through the story, I needed more. I needed to understand this world better. Do they just hide out until the period is gone? What happens? Number one, when you are writing a story, especially when there is a complex world behind it, when certain questions cannot be answered by the short story that you have told, it may be important to consider turning it into a novella. Leslie Neka Arima. <laughs> this is me asking for a novella of this story because I need to know more. I also love how African writers these days have 
started using certain words and phrases from their languages in stories without explaining what this word is. The implicit suggestion here is that you are going to find out what this word means because I will use it in a certain way that will let you know. Is this food? Is it sweet food? Is this something that I wear? Is this a place that I'm going to? What is happening in the story to explain the word that is being said? For those of us who are doing world building, it becomes important to think about these things because every time you introduce a brand new word, having to explain what it is rather than situating it within the story and then allowing the reader to discover what it is. Some readers, of course, get exhausted by that kind of thing, but that's where I thrive. There were characters who were living in this self-clothed woman's house and one was called Delilah and the other one Doreen. The names don't sound the same when you speak them, but because you are reading and if you are a quick reader or whatever you are, the names are too similar. I kept getting confused. I don't know whether it was Delilah who chose to remain unclothed or Doreen, someone had a bookstore, someone was timid, somebody went outside, another person. Like I could never remember which character did what. The other thing is, and I have been contemplating this for a while, because in my work in progress right now, there is a significant event that happened in the past that is being continually referenced in the story. I'm not a fan of prologues, but I'm not afraid of including them if they're necessary. But sometimes a prologue needs to be an entire story. So it may not be a bad thing, actually, to include with your story a companion book. That's something. But I was thinking because there is the whole culture of the Osu caste is a whole other story. Who are these people? Who determined that they were lower caste? And finally, this idea is a fascinating premise. A world in which women are required by law to be naked. Not in the Ferengi way. I don't know if you are not a Star Trek fan or have not watched Deep Space Nine. This can be difficult to understand, but the Ferengi went home to Ferenginar. Ram and his brother. I cannot remember his brother's name, even though Ram was not the main character, but uh, the other Ferengi who ran the bar. But she's wearing clothes. They're comfortable with her nakedness, but they're uncomfortable with her clothing herself. That is completely opposite to this story because everybody's comfortable with the nakedness and comfortable with the clothing. I enjoyed reading it and I enjoyed talking about it afterwards, just like I'm enjoying talking about it with you. That was skinned by Leslie Neka Arima. There will be a link to her website in the description box below. Please visit her, read the story, let her know what you thought. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below because I'm interested in knowing if you were placed in this situation. Are you the kind of person who follows these kinds of rules easily? You know, this is the law, women are supposed to be unclothed and therefore I will walk around without clothes? Or are you the rebel kind of person who clothes themselves will find every opportunity to just make themselves comfortable regardless of what you think. There was this one particular character who decided she wasn't ever going to get married. She was going to make money for herself. I think she's the one who owned a, a bookstore. You know, whatever. Look at her sagging boobs. Look at her sagging ass. She didn't care. She was just going to live her life as a naked unmarried person and screw your shame. What would you do in this situation? I I'm still trying to think about it and I do not know for sure. Let me know in the comment section below. Please go ahead and read the story. The link also will be in the description box below and I will talk to you all later. Until the next video, I wish you all adieu. I will talk to you in the next video when we discuss the next story. And the next story lined up is The Wall by Marin Hedero. Thank you for being here. I will talk to you later. Oh, subscribe and then come back and watch the next video. Bye.